I'm Jared Hillam. In some of my earlier videos, I've spent time talking about ETL, but I wanna spend more time delving into more real-time data and what the management tools look like in that realm. To start off, I wanna open with describing the world of Kafka. Now, there are holes in the analogy that I'm about to give, but I'm hoping this will visualize what Kafka does for organizations. Imagine that you have a large package sorting facility. On one end, you have a giant unloading dock of trucks bringing in boxes. And on the other end, you have warehouse workers receiving the sorted boxes. And in the middle, you've got a giant conveyor belt that's really smart. Now let's imagine that the boxes are normally tiny little boxes like the size of an engagement ring box. The warehouse workers at the end of the conveyor belt are responsible for picking up these packages from the conveyor to sort or dispatch them further. Now, each worker might focus on a specific type of package or a certain destination. The smart conveyor, uh, it can make those adjustments based on what each worker wants. Now, imagine that you have a worker taking a lunch break. Well, you can't just shut off the entire factory because this guy needs lunch. So the smart conveyor has a storage unit that holds the boxes until the worker comes back, after which the conveyor will unload what it has. The storage also acts as a buffer to unload boxes at a slower pace if the workers aren't able to move fast enough. Now, additionally, sometimes there's just an influx of boxes coming into the sorting facility so that the smart conveyor storage is really an important buffer to make sure that everything gets delivered. Now, I want you to imagine that a box the size of a car was dropped off by one of the trucks into the warehouse. Would it be easy to process that enormous box? Well, that really depends. I mean, what if, what if you had to put that box into a storage unit because someone wasn't ready to process it? Would it have room to fit with all the other things it needs to store? That huge box would likely slow down the entire sorting facility. Okay, so let's decode this analogy into Kafka parlance. The little boxes are the messages. The trucks are the producers. The smart conveyor is the Kafka broker. And the storage unit is the data retention and end worker is the consumer. Now, as with any analogy, there are holes. For example, the same message can be shared with multiple consumers. Also, Kafka has this ability to guarantee the order of the messages that follows a strict sequence, which is critical for applications and databases. Now, just like the scenario with the really large box, a Kafka service is usually not designed for large messages. So in Kafka, we usually have a size limitation that gets imposed to avoid bottlenecks. Additionally, we have to pay close attention to size, the storage and retention policies in a Kafka deployment. Kafka is meant for very, very large scale, fast paced messaging as in trillions of little message events a day. That worker taking lunch in our analogy can be a consumer who has a hardware problem or an internet outage. The Kafka retention policy gracefully adapts to the inconsistency of consumers, allowing for outages and slow consumers or a large influx of messages from producers. We've written a small white paper on Kafka and how to leverage it in an enterprise at scale, which I've included in the video description. Additionally, if you're working on making your organization work in real time, I recommend you reach out to Nest to talk with a specialist, and I've included a link for that as well.